Hey everyone, uh, this is a uh, casting setup I've got. It's running off of a uh, mainly the uh, Lee little, I believe it's a uh, eight pound or five pound. Uh, I believe it's the smallest uh, little casting furnace or melting pot you can buy. Uh, it's got a basic little uh, heating element inside of the uh, container and it's got a very rudimentary uh, adjustment on the back for temperature. Uh, I believe low, which is all the way off, is off, and then one, between one to two is about 600 degrees, uh, and I believe I had it on four or five, and the lead was glowing red, so right off the bat I knew that this wasn't going to work, so I built this, uh, controller. It's with a, uh, a MyPen, these little Focus Temperature Controller T-Series. It's just your generic, uh, Chinese controller um, but in a little box this is some old uh, little plate that I had had little uh, perforated holes made it pretty easy for mounting stuff uh, it has a solid state relay in there and it's got a little plug on the side some little antique plug that I had uh, I just take the uh, the cord that goes from the oven plug it directly into here and then it has a, a little uh, solid state relay that it's bolted onto this heat sink. Not that it actually needs it, it never actually gets warm. Uh, I wasn't sure, but uh, <clears throat> the box was gonna come out to the perfect size for this heat sink, so it worked out. Um, it works on Celsius. Uh, if you know Celsius, it's great. If you don't, uh, Google it. That's what I had to do, because uh, I'm here in America. We use Imperial, which is fucking retarded. I'm not sure there's no uh, metric. A lot easier. So uh, right now I've set it set to 370 degrees. It, it has a smart function. It can see whenever it's warming up and it doesn't just turn it off at a certain temperature and then once it gets down to like the yeah, set a little bit below the set temperature turns it back on then it overshoots it and then it comes back and cools back down and goes below where it's supposed to and then it catches back up. You can see it actually pulsing uh, on and off. Kind of uh, sort of strobing. Barely enough to keep it, uh, keep it warmed up. And it works pretty good. Once you use it a couple times it seems to figure out how long it takes to warm up but uh, as you know you never know how much you're going to have in your pot so what I did for a, uh, an actual thermocouple, it's using a, a K-type thermocouple, is I had to get one that was long enough to actually go down in there. Let me turn my flashlight on. And you can see, focus, there you go. Uh, I've just got a little welded up apparatus uh, that holds that thermocouple down all the way to the bottom. I think it's a little bit off the bottom. You can kind of adjust the height with those, uh, the nuts. Put that back on there because I'm casting a little bit. And uh, it's got a little thumb nut on the side. That I use it to clamp to the pot and it's enough that actually it, it doesn't hit this barely so I mean it's it's one of those things where you just pull it off and stick it over here or stick it over here or whatever's convenient for and I just have the uh, the power set to on because it's not being used and uh, the fan is a hydroponics inline fan I believe it's a six or an eight inch uh, I just use dryer duct and I just blow it out my uh, my, uh, my garage here, so that's no big deal. It is flex aluminum duct. What size is it? For heating and cooling. Oh, it's six inch. There we go. It's a uh, hydro farm. It's just an inline fan. It's actually pretty quiet, relatively. It's not like a drone where you, know, you get a headache after a while. But, uh, it's going full blast right now. I don't know if that picks it up or not. But, uh, yeah. Got a basic little, uh, quenching bucket. Put a, uh, wire frame down in here to catch all the bullets. To pull them out. Last time I didn't do that, I had to reach down there and collect each one of them. Uh, running a linotype. And a buddy of mine had some, uh, a bunch of melted down bullets. So, it's working great. Um, I'll try to find the the numbers or the model numbers of the stuff that I use, which was just the, uh, I believe they call this a PLC or just temperature controller. I think it was like 25 or 20 bucks, you know, just generic Chinese price. And then the, uh, soul state relay, I believe was like a 20, 30 or 40 amp. I'm not, I don't remember, but it's, it doesn't matter. I mean, this thing can't mold it more than, wow, my English are gooder. It can't pull more than about 20 amps. Uh, but yeah, there's really not a lot going on in there. 
Uh, there's just the uh, input for the uh, the cord and then the, the thermal couple. It takes multiple different kinds of thermal couples. So if you get something wrong, uh, or if you get something else, it'll uh, it'll figure it out and it'll it'll run it. But uh, I chose the K because I knew that it would work. I use K's for uh, other fluke meters I've got here at the shop. Um, and the make sure if you're going to buy a thermal couple, be sure that it's rated for a certain temperature because different ones are made for different temperatures. Some are really accurate, like sub zero. Some are super accurate above like six, 700. Uh, other ones have like a wide variety of ranges and they're not super accurate. Uh, this one, I think I paid five or six bucks for uh, free shipping. And yet again, another 20, $25 for that. And I had the solid state relay from pulled out of older equipment. Uh, nonetheless, I bet 25 bucks, probably another 20 bucks for the, uh, the relay and then seven or eight bucks for that so I, mean, I can't have more than 20 or 50, I feel like 50 or 60 bucks in this plus my time because I made the box uh, plus the plug something I had handy but use what you got and uh, just get it done